Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Traverse Fitness. We are out here in California, Richmond, California, for wave two of our seventh qualifier for Ninja Sport Championship. We're looking for 10 men and 10 women for our finals here in this wave. I'm Chris Ganji, joined alongside Ryan Stratus. Hello, everyone. It's great to be back. Hopefully, everybody ran off, got a snack, something to drink. We're ready for the second wave here in the open. Going to be figuring out who those top 10 men and women are going to be as we get ready for the finals this afternoon. Here's a look at the open course rules. They're going to have three minutes. Top 10 men and women will advance to the finals round, and the athletes will be utilizing the retry system. Athletes get three fails, three attempts per obstacle. If an, a if an obstacle is failed, the athlete will reset on the starting platform, and they have to complete the obstacle to move on. We've seen the block run. And the flying bar be absolute Wolf. ninja killers in the earlier rounds. Wolf, indeed. That one hasn't been forgiving at all. Yeah, so we'll see if athletes have a little bit more success with those. But here's how the standings work if there are tiebreakers. The total number of obstacles completed is basically will determine the winner. And if there's a tie, then the least number of total fails. And the time to complete the last obstacle will determine the tiebreaker. Yeah, so it's still very important to perform the best you can here in the open. Not only does that determine your positioning for the finals rounds, all all three rounds when you get there, uh, but it could also come into play for the tiebreaker. And here's a look at the women's leaderboard from our first round. Yeah, Jalen Bennett on sitting the women's side. In first, Brittany Durant in second, both getting through five obstacles. Let's look over at the men's leaderboard. Francisco and Arnold, the only two athletes to be able to get through the flying bar combo. But up right now. And here's a look at the run order on the right-hand side. Haley Carmody, number 39. She's going to be our first runner of the wave. So you can see Haley, Emily Gardner, Carter Ray will lead off the charge. Ethan Swanson is looking over the course, getting our last bit of course adjustments. Yes, I mean, you go back, you think about wave one, and really interesting, we saw the, the agility obstacle, which has an upper body component where the athletes have to launch into the obstacle from a trapeze bar. Mm -hmm. I mean, we saw that be the absolute ninja killer of the day. And so we'll see if the athletes in wave two have kind of observed, learned, strategized and we will see how they've adjusted to yep. that obstacle not sure what the breakdown is i know you said you were trying to figure out which one was better going to the second block or trying to hit the first one and running smoothly all the way through it's tough when you're out there you're hanging from an upper body obstacle trying to transition back down to your feet being aware of the timing foot placement and everything's got to be on point Haley trying to visualize a little bit with her hand motions out there. Trying to figure out what foot goes where, where hand, which hand goes where. All that is good to map out ahead of time. And Haley trying to scrub through some footage here. Here to... we he go. We're down on the floor with Haley Carmody, our first athlete in wave two. Haley on the move. Go, flying down the track. Landing to have enough speed to go through with it. Taking that cane along the ride down the ring slider. Great. Gotta have enough momentum from this angle to see exactly how far that dismount is, but if you don't get on the line, it's going to be a tough to make. So plan of attack here. One, two, almost saves it on the second. But you can see, first block is deceiving. You can't commit to full waiting onto that first one. Switch you off right to the side. Let's go for it. Right through it. A little bit lighter of an athlete. Come on. See if that helps. She's going to go to the first one, I think, and try to hit everyone. Ah, almost. She's not able to get there. Take a breath. At this point, you've gone twice using that first block both times. Can you switch up your game plan? Yeah, try I, think, I think because she's so light, Strat, I think going to the second one is is, is the play here. Needs to sink all the way into it. 
Oh, sticks with the same plan and gets across. Nicely done, Haley. Let's go, Haley. Figures it out on the third attempt. Here we go. You can see that bar spin a little bit. That's why we're going back to that switch grip position. The move up overshoots it just a little bit. We'll see if she can take a little bit off there. Look, she says to the crowd, that's close. It is very close, and that's what makes it really tough. Try number two. Go with as little swings as possible to save some of that grip strength. And one side. Nope, don't get that one. Try up on one side of it. Third and final attempt here, trying to get to that second bar as quick as she can. Switch grip tech Haley looking for the move going up. First tough spot of the way, but we have back down into that cradle. Third and final attempt. No retries here, and that's gonna do it for Haley. Tough break on the other ninja killer on this course, the blind bar combo. She comes in and she actually gets in on her right side, but her left side just hits a little too high. Not able to finish the move. Nice try, Haley. Up now we've got Emily Gardner coming from the Grit Ninja of Bedford Hills, New York. 15 years old, Emily. On now to obstacle number two, moving pretty quick. We've seen her at several NSCs in the past. Eat a lot. Come on, you got this. Make way in to the finals. So we're playing with Tax be on the rolling blocks here. One, two, three, four. Great commitment there. Back foot spinning just a little bit. Not letting that slow her down. Continuing the pace. Trying to move quick here. Only got three years of experience, but trained with some experienced athletes in the New York area. Unfortunate first attempt. Okay. Try to dial this in. On season three of A&W Junior. Seen A&W Junior in a couple of years now. These athletes looking for more challenges outside of the show. Second attempt here. Ah, just shy on the one side. And yeah, she just overshot it. We're, we're seeing that happen a lot. And again, I mean, you saw Haley on the last run look at the audience and show her hands and, and say it's really close. And that's the issue with this with this obstacle is that it's really precise. And the moves are just a little closer, and so overshooting it is, is, is what we've seen most of today. We're trying to find a good rhythm here. Third and final attempt. Up and not able to get both sides in there. Tough break for Emily. Got there very quickly. Puts her into third currently. As those two back-to-back -back ninja killers have made this a challenging spot early on in the course. You can see just that one side. And she just overshot it by kind of a lot, Shred. A lot of power. Just try, Emily. Tough moves. <laughs> Carter Ray coming out of the Ninja Coalition headquarters coming out of Cottonwood, California 10 years of experience 22 years old so he started back in the day good swing, nicely done got a strong base in parkour but he's also works as a tree climber Woo. So no stranger to being up up at the heights. So these higher obstacles probably won't pose any any issues for him. Let's see if he can branch out here and be a little further into the course compared to the other athletes as he takes the fall there. Two more tries. Precision, precision, 
precision on every move here not just not just the one with the sandwich cradles Iron bar down not quite there not quite He'll hit it on that attempt he's got one more attempt see how how oh nice hop off Nice continuous move there. A little closer. Third and final attempt here. And not quite able to get there. The third and final attempt. Nice try. It was fast to that point. Let's try Carter. Up now. Colin Kapo'o. Up now. Yeah, Colin Kapo'o, and we'll see his sister Violet compete later. We saw them down at Austin Ninjas. We've seen their, their dad compete at Austin Ninjas Libertyville. So, <laughs> Kapo'o clan. Staying busy. Busy. And Colin here, yeah, coming out of Ninja Playground. Pleasant Grove, Utah. 13 and a half years old, 100 pounds. Barely gonna make these blocks spin. If you hit it just right, hold on tight, young man. Not quite there. Try to go for the deep frog tech. Take it back to the start. Here we go one more time. Big leap onto it. Can he stop the fall from happening? Yeah, I think the tough one there is he got a lot of height coming off the trapeze bar. Came down with a lot of weight onto that second block. Yeah, timing this just right. Looks like he's going to go for that big move again. Nope, just kidding. Going to the first and sprinting across. Nicely done, Cullen. I mean, that's another athlete using the first block, making it look pretty good. I think the beta is sort of shifting on that one. Well, it's tough to really decide in the moment when you know working against the clock and you only have that one last chance. Do you stick with what went with the first two times and try something entirely new? Here we are now, flying bar time. A lot of swings. Trying to get position just right here from the up move. Not there. Flying bar can be so frustrating because you have to get that swing just right, put too much power into it, your timing's off just a little bit. You want to take a re-swing to correct yourself or potentially risk whipping entirely. Two swings. Ah, got there quicker. Looked like the right side was on. The left side was overshot. Come on, we got one more try, Cullen. We got another fan of baseball here outside of Ninja City. Likes watching baseball. So hopefully this isn't the third strike. Mr. Cullen as he works his way up and overshoots that left side again. Nice try. Next up, an athlete I am very familiar with, Anne-Marie Lancaster. She is on our elite team at Ultimate Ninjas Naperville. Her parents are my vet, so they oh, take care of take my care little of, babies. Uh, Obi? How's, okay. Obi, how's Obi's hip? Obi's doing okay. okay Anne Marie's mom is going to do some surgery on Obi's knee. She tore her ACL, so she's in very good hands, though. I trust her completely. Nice. I got to say a lot of nice things here about Anne Marie, so that <laughs> so that they they're nice to me at the vet oh office. Oh my goodness. Anne Marie on the move. Anne Marie has competed a few times this season. Hasn't broken into the top ten, but she was a championship athlete last year. One, two, three, down we go. Those blocks, you can see that first one. You step wrong onto it, that first step down off of the trapeze, it's going to be tough to recover from. She's got to come in with a little bit more speed here if she's going to use that first one. Stay in the middle. What a save there at the end. was collapsing down just a little bit, was able to fall forwards onto the end platform. Nicely done. Well, Anne-Marie is one of the kids in my gym. When somebody asks me, hey, how do I link Lachey's? I always point to Anne-Marie and say, hey, she can show you. She's very good with her technique. 
on the Shays and Flying Bars. Ooh, just a I had to off. say something. Commentator's curse coming in quick for Mr. Deganji. That's all right. Fresh face over there, repositioning the bar just to be safe. And Marie going for the up move here. Nicely done, keeping those hips up, bringing the bar with. Now try to reverse that process on the way down into the cradle over top one side. Not able to lock it in. We get one more chance. More attempt here for Anne Marie. Better known as AML. Here we go again, going up. Makes the up move. Nicely done. Can we get this lock in down? Oh, try to go on top of both, which we haven't seen anybody try as of she yet. Went, That's she went to the good. top, which is allowed in the rules they said for the for the women's. You, you could go to the top. Let's see. You can see she's okay here on her left. Doesn't quite hit it on the right side. She's in fifth place at the moment. Next, Caden Forsha. Hey, Caden Forsha, coming out of Ninja Intensity, the Chatterbox Ninja. What he used to go by back in the day when he was on A&W Junior. Yeah, Chatterbox Ninja, we've, we've actually seen him a lot because we've been to Ninja Intensity a few times for Bucket of Chalk and some other competitions. So it's been really fun, actually. He's 13 now. Just old enough to compete in NSC. It's been really fun to watch how, how strong he's got. Yeah, definitely grown up with the sport. Be a pretty shy and uh, shy kid to start off. And now you can <laughs> see him out here with some confidence. Let's see how he attacks the course here today. Mr. Porsche on the move. Yeah, I like the word confidence that you use because that's definitely how he has been running the, the bucket of chalks and some of the other competitions that we've seen. He just he's been running with confidence. Trains under John Maul there, Mr. Intensity himself. One, two, three, four, no problem. Nicely across the rolling blocks. Grab a little bit of that bucket of chalk, chalk. Strat, what do you think about this? Only two athletes have cleared this obstacle so far. Oof. And we're on to like our 30th male runner, somewhere around there. Yeah, just that difficulty spike here. Early in the course, it's uh. Tough transition, you know. I'd expect to see something like this a little further into the course, a high fail rate type obstacle. Tough move in the open. But those that can get past it might secure that spot for the finals here. Overshoots again. I wonder if he's got the power just to go straight into the cradle. Be surprised to see somebody do that and maybe redemption time and open gym time towards the end, but probably too intimidating of a move to try to make during a competitive run. Third and final try for Caden. Oh, it just overshoots every time. Had the power. Just couldn't dial in the accuracy. Nice try, Caden. Oh, yeah, for the just top. overshot it. Speaking of the Capo O clan, Joseph. Joseph up next. Hawaiian warrior rocking that pretty cool design shirt there. Healthcare professional family man, 43 years old. Repping, repping us senior ninjas in the game <laughs> nowadays, it seems like. We get, everybody's like well under 21 in the scene nowadays. You know I'm going to pull for the for the old guys. There we go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Jeez, Louise. <laughs> can't believe we even got to call ourselves old in the sport now. <laughs> Fun fact, he likes to beat box here. Let's see if uh, he can beat the rolling boxes when he gets to them. And we're off. Just last competed on American Ninja Warrior in season 12. Made it to the UNAA finals in the Masters division. Got eighth. And 
here he is now rocking his way through the first couple of obstacles so far. Let's see what we got on the... Oh, my gosh. Exit stage right. That would be stage left okay, for him, so, yeah. <laughs> Come on, Joseph. No, Round number two coming up. Oh, and the beatboxers beat those boxes. Excellent job. <laughs> it's got to be cool for him, you know, to see Violet and Cullen also competing and just doing it as a family. And it's got to be really cool. Yeah, it's got to be fun to have the whole family in the building. Off just a little bit side. Take a breather and try again here. Second try coming up to the top and overshoots. Such a tough move to make. Third and final attempt. Nice, gets up a little bit for that first cradle and the drop down. No, or shoots it on the one side. Nice try, Joseph. Again, the air trap posing as the stopping point for many. Claims another. You can see he gets in. Cool. Honestly, kind of overshoots it. It looked like both yeah, sides really, were in. Really pushed through there. I think this is going to be definitely the highest fail rate obstacle out of all Ninja Sport Championships we've been through. Go back and look at the stats on that one. Might need to do a strat stats on the NSCs. Strat stats. Strat stats, bring that back. Get my laugh strings going again. Aiden Geiger on the move right now. Aiden's coming out of the movement lab. San Dimas. Trains in SoCal. Big into math and has his own backyard course and missed time to kip forwards on the way down. Knows it. Needs to go ahead and reset. Try this again. It's really neat to wait out for that hit on the end of the track. Gets the timing that time around. Check the tech here on the block run. Nicely done. Just kept on going. Streamlined through. All right, gonna go ahead and pop quickly to the flying bar. Can we get this in just a couple moves? Nicely done up to the first cradle. Dropping down and in. Nice job. Watch those corners. Please get this dismount, dude. Come on. Dismount's big. Get out of there. You can hit it. Okay, nicely done. He gets on through and right away into the chalk spot. There we go. Now we got these offset floating monkey bars. Bio says he can do 10 one-arm pull-ups. And that's a good skill to have when you're locked off pretty much the entire time on this obstacle. Aiden, a little bit more swing here. That bar unhinged from behind. Great stuff. Those one-arm pull-ups really put on display here. Gets a clean landing. Now it's going to be on to half-pipe attack. Not taking a long break here. Up and over and around. Dropping down. Moving in to first place with that spot. Plenty of time left. He's got a whole minute and five seconds right now on the time. Goes with that overhead battering ram. And working his way through. Has to drop down here to a precision landing. Now, this is not a fun move to make. Watch those heels. And right away onto the UFO. Aiden putting on a strong run here. Really getting deeper into the course. 45 seconds remain. Having that precision landing, though. Straight to a UFO. Into more battering rams here. That is the first athlete we've seen get this far. Jeez Louise. Come on, Aiden. Open palm grip. Dig deep here. Oh, he's gonna take the he's gonna have to take the reset here. So he'll have to go from I believe the balance rail. Yeah, this is 
an absolute burner of an obstacle. You start from the rail. Only 10 seconds or so remain on the young official time in the bottom right side of your screen. What a run from Aiden Geiger. Impressive stuff. Dominantly into first place right now with a run like that. Yeah, that puts him in first place. Really impressive. And, uh, man, the way that this competition is going, getting through that flying bar sandwich cradles, I mean, that is going to be a big difference here today. Well, and he didn't spend much time on the, on the floating monkey bars either with that one arm lock off strength of his being put on display. It was a great run, able to get through quickly, get him into that dominant first place position for the time being. But right now on the course, going to be Cora Schuler coming up out of the Obstacle Academy, one of Hunter Gerard's students. Yeah, we got Hunter Gerard behind the camera. Going to be silently cheering for Cora Schuler. Core qualified. Core, core qualified for the NSC Finals last season. Trying to get back into the finals here now. Up and in. And yeah, we saw her at Obstacle Academy, her home gym. She was actually the athlete during the burnout to shut down oh the no, lights. Oh, no, the power outage. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, almost was able to save it. Set. Junior in high school, coaches her younger sister's uh, ninja team and likes building obstacles when she's not competing. Here we go again. Try number two commits to the run across. Nicely done. Here we go for the flying bars. Oh, not going to get on her first try. Have to reset and try again. Good catch here, but can we get the up move? Oh, not going to get it. Second attempt. Encouragement from the sidelines. Everybody trying to cheer each other on. That's what makes this sport so unique. Trying to encourage your competitors. And not going to get the up move there from Cora. Nice try. Good run, Tubi. In sixth place currently. Yeah, let's see if we can take a look at what happened. Not enough up on the power there. Just a little short change on one side, the side she wasn't looking at. Typically how it goes with the flying bars when you got two sides to watch for. It's tough to be accurate on both. Next athlete on right now is going to be Jackson Dunbar coming out of Ultimate Ninja's Neighborville. Another one of my elite team students. Hey. Very excited to see this run. It's funny, actually, Jackson, this week during Open Gym asked to put a further flying bar move in at the gym because he was nervous knowing Traverse Fitness and seeing the comp last year that there might be a flying bar, but unfortunately for Jackson, it's a it's closer close move than a farther bar. move. <laughs> well, if he can go pretty far with those flying bars, he should be able to dial it back for this. No problem on that first block run attempt. Here we go now for the up close and personal. Not quite there. Well, if he's looking for a far move, he should just go straight to the cradle. Yeah, the sandwich cradle. Just skip it. Right. Be a little more accurate with that kind of move, but Jackson, let's see what he's got here. Trying number two. And up and over again. Just an overshot was really extended when he tried to catch. Just to make sure that height's going to be there to have some time to place the bar into the cradle. Final move here. Ah, 
tough break, just that right side, not able to get it in. That's going to claim another at the blind bar. Getting tired of saying that, Andy. Getting tired I'm also getting tired of saying, <laughs> saying that. that. Oh, no, this is no joke. The tough, even the first move up is, uh, yeah. is catching Everyone's people off guard. It and, oh, it's brutal. All right, number 48 on the list, Jeff Baumgartner. On to the move. I'm really stoked to see Jeff run yep. today. We saw him at Ultimate Ninja uh, Libertyville a few weeks ago, hey. and he did really, really well. He was one of the first athletes to Just make it past the crux belt. point. Oh, yeah. Awesome to watch. Okay, he sends those blocks spinning. Able to recover. Keep on moving. Multi-colored socks on. Justin. Come on, Jeff. Get up in the first cradle. Nice accuracy there. No wasted motion. Accurate. One more time. Big arch in the back swing. Beautiful landing, falls into that chalk bucket. Doesn't even need to grab any extra chalk. Goes straight into these floating monkey bars. Thinking about it. And away we go. How good the knockoff strength is here, the one arm strength. That's yeah, tough, man. It's tough because those monkey bars also spin in the cradles. So not only are you trying to make these forward movements, put it into a you know, precise cradle, but your hands are also spinning at the same time. Yeah, it's not easy. Good job. Yeah, the back and forth. Got the switch grip grab, and now he's looking for that dismount. Jeff's on out of there. Excellent work into the half pipe attack. We go. Yeah, there we go. Go ahead and take that ramp attack. Have off to the side and gets the landing on the first try. Nice job. About a minute 15 to go here into the battering ram overhead. Hopping his way down. Shorter athletes can have a bigger drop down to that precision rail. That will be a clear for the battering ram, but falls off of it. That's a miss on the UFO. Oh, you can see just didn't have a good foot, uh, foot position before that jump. Now he goes back to the starting platform. He did touch the UFO, so he gets a clear for the previous obstacle. Job. Plus that little time off of his hands might actually help him in the long run here. Get this UFO dialed in. And great catch on the first. Gonna take it back for a little bit of a slide. Nice timing there with the hip kip. Going up onto that foam roller and back on down the track. Transition over. Not enough lift. Man, and these, these holds and these moves, they're such power moves this late in the course. You're already tired. Fatigued, and now you have to make some pretty powerful moves here. Ooh, not going to get it with the time remaining, but that puts him in his first place. 202, edging out Mr. Geiger from uh, that first place spot. Nicely done. Tries to go for a quick spin around. We see some <laughs> change direction. He knew he didn't have a lot of time. Tried to link through. Great job from Jeff there, honestly. Now as we pan our way over onto the next starting block, we have Emily Keener coming out of Arvada, Colorado. Emily trains at a location called In The Core. A lot of other Colorado athletes have been training there. Trains alongside Austin Gray, Taylor Green, Ada Hansen, Jen Geiger, and Jalen Bennett. Emily's 14 years old. Training Ninja now for about four and a half years. Here we go on her run, taking it away to the zip line. Emily's hoping to get into sports medicine when she's older. So she'll have plenty of patients coming in. Coming out of the ninja world. <laughs> Here we 
go for the block run. One, two, three, four. Nicely done. One foot on each. Gets her way across. Into the flying bar combo. Up and over into that first cradle. Can we get that first flying bar? Not there. Try again. It's tough because you need that power for the up move, but then you got to dial it back just enough to be accurate. Number two, just an overshot onto the right. One more try. Drop it down here for her third and final attempt. Up and over. Had plenty of power that time. Just the accuracy wasn't quite there. But third place right now for Emily making a cross box run in a smooth fashion. See, this is her third and final attempt here. Just up and over on both sides. Was accurate it's on the up, not on the landing. Not able to do it. We're going to go to a quick word. Ninja Sport Championship is brought to you by Role Model Software. They craft custom software tailored to fit your business needs, and they're also the makers of Ninja Master and Lightning Cat. Silent Ninja, check out their website for exclusive ninja holds and ninja training equipment. Salibra Family Restaurants, supporters of the Ronald McDonald House, helping families and children in need consider donating today. Biagi Bros, a full-service logistics company with 3PL and supply chain solutions with warehouses and truck terminals scattered across the U.S. League of Ninja Warriors, check out their website for exclusive ninja collectibles. Ocean Needs Everyone, the nonprofit organization dedicated to helping save our oceans. And Bucket of Chalk, our official chalk sponsor. Reach into the bucket and grab some chalk today. And a huge thank you to all of our sponsors. Appreciate the support. And try Troy Meisner. Down on the floor. Troy's on the move. Troy coming out of Ultimate Ninja's Naperville. Known as the Destroyer Ninja. Play on words there. Yeah, competed last season on American Ninja Warrior. Season 14. Oh, coming in. Looking like he's going to make it. Not quite air grabbing onto the hips ribs a little bit hopefully he's gonna be okay bit of a tumble he took a hard hit on the pad there the landing platform he was so close hopefully it doesn't shake him shake him up at all oh, nice work great adjustment there push on through see him kind of wincing a little bit he's talking to Jesse Lebrecht and some of his other training partners don't feel it right now, I think, is what I heard Jesse say. <laughs> and, uh, man, when the adrenaline's going, yep, it helps with the, uh, helps with the pain. It's good advice. You want to focus up, but, man, it's where it really starts the test, intestinal fortitude here of these athletes. Dropping down into the cradle, maybe. Let's go watch the top. I think he's got to fix this. I think he's got to fix this. I don't know what to do here. What would you do? Going to reset it? Yeah. Yes, yeah, so on the men's side, you're not allowed to use the top, so he gets the word from Ethan Swanson. Got to come down. Top's out of bounds for men. Halfway in there. Let's see him get it full this time, hopefully. It's the up move. Dropping down, gets into the cradle. We want a big dismount here. Get this landing in one. Big pull through. Big dismount. Let's go, Troy. My goodness. My goodness. Grab some chalk. Head on back. You're doing the Cody Monk bars, which is the crutch. Yes. So, got about 45 seconds to play with here. Great lock off strength right there from Troy. Got a rock climbing background, so shouldn't have any problems when it comes to hanging from his hands for a long time, but 
range of motion here is limited based on how that hand is placed. Might have enough time for another try. He's got to go quick. Coming up on about 10 seconds remaining. Let's see. He's only got five seconds here. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Not sure that's going to be enough to get him through the floating monkey bars. But great job getting through what has been a stopping point for many on the bear trap line bar combo here in the open. Yeah, let's see. You can see as he's trying to place this one, the bar is just not straight. Every time he swings through, the bar just not quite straight. And again, the hole that you're hanging on to, it's a spinning bar, so you're really not going to have a lot of attempts if you miss. Plus, the way his hand was facing, the hand was facing inwards, so it didn't get the full rotation out of the shoulder to get that extra reach. Those long arms are unfortunate. But here we go. Up now is going to be Nate Hansen, the gnarly one. Coming out of Ninja Nation, Lafayette in Lafayette, Colorado. And he really exploded onto the scene in American Ninja Warrior back in Season 12. He's been just dominating the scene. Flying through things. Very capable athlete here. One of the first assistant coaches I worked with back at the Lafayette location. And he's just come so strong in such a short amount of time. Nicely done, Nate. Get across that balance off. Let's see if he's got the precision here on the flying bar. Oh, and I've seen him do some crazy stuff, but this one just... Yeah, left side. Left side just never got high enough on that one. But see if he can make the adjustment. Nate's done several NSCs. He knows the format. Knows not to get too worried if he makes a mistake. Good move up and nice drop down into the cradle and no problem with the dismount either. Quickly through. Fun fact is he can do, he says, 77 pull-ups at a go at a time. 77. So don't think he'll have any issues with these lock-offs here. So he can just relaxing. He wants to bump his hand just a little bit closer. A little shorter of a reach. Oh, don't drop it. There we go. Good placement. hand position. You want to reposition where that hand is to try to help with the shoulder rotate. Let's see if he decides that. Watch the hand opening up. It's on a spinning bar. Oh. Nice. Still need to have a little bit of a lift here to get that back cradle bar out of there. Stay relaxed. Yes, Nate. Let's go. Oh, yeah. No strain on the face whatsoever. Staying calm and collected. Dismount on Alivair. Nicely done. Heading on now to the half pipe of pass. Yes, let's go, Nate. Short run up. No problem. Gets it in one. To put him in the third. He's got about 50 seconds remaining on the unofficial time. The bottom right of your screen. On to the back half now. Chalk up just a little bit more before leaping on up. To this overhead battering ram. Big drop here, careful on the landing. Got to work that parkour a little bit. Find that landing, commit to the drop. Sticks it. Nice job. That's really nice precision there from Nate. Comes down kind of hard on it, honestly. He's going to take a drop here. Was well, a pumpy obstacle to go from the overhead battering ram right away off of that precision landing into the UFOs. And that's his time, yeah. wants to feel it just in case he does make it to the hybrid. These athletes will do these obstacles again. Always important to get more information. Nicely done from Nate. Oh, just wants to give it a little, little test spin. That way he is ready. Change of direction type Let's stuff. again. So we're actually we're going to jump to a quick commercial break. They're going to look at some things down on the course. We're going to hear from a word from our sponsors. 
have you ever experienced extremely sweaty hands? Not knowing where to step on agility? Being unlucky on special delivery? Or being absolute trash at Double Dipper? Then Bucket of Chalk Chalk is the right chalk for you. Side effects may include extremely grippy hands even after washing them. Always know where to step on agility. Adds a bit of extra luck on special deliveries and it tastes like success. Hi, my name is Enzo Ferrari Wilson, and I am the founder of the ocean conservation organization, Ocean Needs Everyone, and we are proud to be a sponsor for Ninja Sport Championship Season Hi, my name is Enzo Ferrari Wilson, and I am the founder of the ocean conservation organization, Ocean Needs Everyone, and we are proud to be a sponsor for Ninja Sport Championship Season 2. I'm here to tell you today about three reasons why you should help the ocean. One, there's so much left to discover in the ocean, 91% of marine species are still undiscovered. Two, if we don't help soon, there's a projection that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Three, without the ocean, we wouldn't even be here right now because it gives us 65% of our oxygen. So even if you don't live near an ocean, go out and pick up some trash because it will make a difference. And one final bonus reason why you should save the ocean is because it's nice and refreshing. Here at Role Model Software, we value our partnerships with our clients. Listen as Dr. Eric Freeman talks about our partnership with Cultivate Leadership Institute. CLI was trying to find which software company we want to partner with. We talked with a number of different ones, but the thing that made Role Model stand out was the connection that we had with them. So if you're trying to figure out how do I select the right company for us, you need to make sure that you don't just do that digitally. It's not just an email. It's not just a Zoom call. You need to make sure that you get face-to-face -to -face with these individuals to make sure that your mission and your vision align so that you're creating the product that you want to create. And Role Model has the ability to do that. They're very personal, they care about your product, they care about you personally, and they want to help deliver the product that you need. If you're curious if Role Model could be the right fit to partner with you, reach out to us today. We'd love to talk to you. And here we go back down to the floor. Violet Kpoo standing by. She is ready to go. Well, Violet really burst onto the scene this year at NSC down in Austin Ninja. She was incredible, made it to the final. She was in the top 10, really great performance. She took first in the burnout, third in the hybrid. Second overall, so hoping she gets back to the top 10 today. Love to see her take on another burnout course. Lock in this line bar here. Really tough to dial it in just right, so needs to take some extra swings to be safe. Great work. extra swings though start to add up to the grip here going for the drop down so close just off to the side here we go again for try number two on this flying bar cradle devious obstacle it's the up move one more time. Nice work. Let's see if she can make it into the sandwich cradles. On Violet, drop on down. Get in there. Nice work. It's a transition to the ring and gets on through. She's going to pick up the pace a little bit for the remaining obstacles. That's going to put her into third place currently. A minute and some change remaining. Up the half pipe attack. Excellent. Landing there, moving on. That's a great Giant. job. She's she's definitely a shorter athlete, so big big jump there to the rope. Well, here comes the climb up here. Feet are okay on the rope. Leave if you want to use those legs, but if not, 
go on the giant giant hoopsie daisies let's get this ring swinging nice and straight if possible and gets the rope grab nicely done hold on tight so she can climb up a little bit you gotta unhook it this is gonna be a really challenging move you can see her building up her swing you gotta unhook it Fight it all the dun, way down da, to the da, dismount. Dun, da, da. Hey. <laughs> Our first athlete through that obstacle, Violet, is crushing it right oh, now. She's got five seconds. She can go one more. Just needs to take a rope swing. It's just a rope swing to a platform. Get one more point with the time remaining. Yeah, Unofficial on, time in the bottom right corner, but no. She should have at least tried. Oh, Violet, what a great run, though. My goodness. Yeah, we'd like to see her take that rope swing. It's a rope swing back. It's a big rope swing. Hands looked like they were maybe bothering her a little bit, maybe a little pumped, but definitely wanted to see her take that rope swing to the, to the right. platform. But I think we will be seeing her again in the finals. So keep an eye out for Violet nice. once Done. again showing up at NSC. Great job. Up next, Ryan Richardson. Ryan Richardson on the move from on that zip line. Ryan's coming out of Ninja Force, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Big old kip out, lands right on that corner of the landing platform. Aspiring chess player. Quite checkmate on that move. Line was back up. Round number two. One, two, three, four. Gets across. That time around. Flying far. Oh, open. tried to oh. link it. Yeah, dude. Flying here. Flying Ryan. Ryan gets far. Right away in the cradle. Up to the top cradle now, looking for that bottom one. Richardson. No. One final attempt here. Another avid gamer as well, said he's passionate about video games and chess outside of Ninja. Wants to go to college for some computer science classes. Let's figure out this move right here, though. Up and down and overshoots. Nice try, Mr. Richardson. Top 10 to be in. Top 10 now. you got to get through those first three as fast as you can. You'll notice at the bottom of your screen, Scoreboard has come back. Another look at this line bar attempt here. See him almost stick the landing, just overshoots the side he wasn't looking at. Makes that move so difficult. Another ninja coming out of the grip. Another Beckstrand coming out of the grip. That's it, Alex. Move through. I believe Alex is a cousin to Kai and. Right there in his bio, Kai is his cousin, not his brother. I think we made that mistake in the past, so thanks for keeping us keeping us in the right here as he moves right along. Spinning blocks, no problem. Infections are taking over. There's too many to keep track of. They're all just <laughs> holding in the family. Ready for the flying bar check. Brian, if you're watching the stream, we're going to need a complete family tree Ooh. at some point. <laughs> detailed out. Coming up, fun fact, Alex was in Brazil for two years on a mission and speaks Portuguese. Bilingual here, coming into the cradle. Nice job. This huge dismount. Ooh, plenty of swing through. Nice job, Alex. A 
passions outside of Ninja. He's training to be a firefighter in Las Vegas. Oh, well, if he likes Ninja, he'll at least be able to see it once a year, regardless if he winds up being a firefighter and gets through those floating monkey bars no problem. Yeah, he's flying right now, Strat. He's a minute and 26 seconds to this point. Yeah. Going to take a second to chalk up. See, he overshot the landing platform. That's totally fine the way it works here in Ninja Sport championships it's on or beyond the plane coming down the endless battering ram watch this landing sticks it and right back into it dropping down and let those hands rest a bit still has a full minute once that time winds down for the reset he can try again Yes, it's kind of where the strategy is coming into play on the course. These athletes wanting the rest there. They're okay taking the one fall as long as it gets them a little bit of extra time to shake out. Tough to try to dial in as UFO throws accurately into that switch grip grab on these battering ramps. Alex for the move up. Hold on tight. Watch those sides. Fighting through it here. Needs to go forward again. Change that direction. Here comes the drop. Got to go up. In a flying bar cradle. Oh, <sighs> the whole thing tips over. My goodness, what a tough move. And don't think he'll have the time to get a full run across, but might want to just feel out the start here one more time. Who knows what it feels like when it comes to the hybrid. There it is. Alex Beckstrand, great run. It's going to put him into second place. Yeah, he's going to go ahead here and just feel it out. Honestly, great run. Puts him in a second place. And this course is extremely pumpy. I don't know. Tough We've got some good athletes coming up, Strat. But, I, man, I thought we'd see three finishers. I'm going to knock that number down maybe to, like, one. Man. <laughs> I don't know. Don't want to underestimate these athletes. But, holy cow, this it's course, tough course is man. brutal. Brutal. Here we go, Jay Lisa Hemka on the move. Just recently got her phone call for season 15 of American Ninja Warrior. 15 years old is the new age limit. Lisa, experienced competitor on various leagues. Clear, nicely done, clearing the plane. One, two, not able to save it, that's all right. Yeah, Jalisa, not too much momentum into the first block. I think she's going to want, want to be just a little faster. Folks in more in other sports. Taking a little bit of time away from Ninja, but one, two, three, four gets across that time. There it is. Eighth place right now. That's a tough spot to be. Clearing this obstacle would go a long way in getting here to the finals later on today. Comes a flying bar tech. Playing basketball in high school. Let's see her slam dunk onto these cradles here. Nice job on the first move up. Drop down, though, is a little too off to one side. It's going to have to reset for another attempt. Jay Lisa and her mom, Suzanne, both uh, train out of and run the program at Lost Island Warrior in Colorado Springs. Outside training facilities. Pretty cool area. Try number two coming up for uh, Lisa. Comes the drop down. There it is. Hold on tight. One side a little closer than the other, but transitions. Nice hop through to the ring. Build up a little momentum for the dismount. Nicely done. Quick little double fist pump. That's huge, Strat. Happy about that one indeed as we go to that half pipe attack. Takes the landing, trying to increase that lead as much as she can with a minute and 10 seconds. Here comes the rope climb. Exhausting position to be in before having to get a big built up for another rope grab. Didn't get much swing off the start, so that might be kind of tough to generate. Got such a huge pendulum. Oh, the hang oh. time. Not quite there. Laughing it off as she gets back up. Is 
with a huge throw. Shake out a little bit. Big leap up. This rope, don't underestimate this rope climb right here. Use the legs as much as you can. Give those hands a break when you get to the top here. There you go, smart. A little bit of a foot pinch there on the rope. Now gets that rope. Here he gets the ring swing. Poopsie daisy does it. Not quite. And she's all right. Coming down, puts her into fourth place currently. Nice job out of Jaylee Sahemka. Yeah, I mean, here she comes on that first attempt, and you can see she almost makes the catch, but definitely looks like her hands are a little oh. tired, just not <laughs> enough. She's smiling at the bottom. Dude, rope grab where you're like full extension like that and trying to hold on tight after the body catches up with your hands. Not an easy task to do. You can see how she's like walking back to the starting platform in that one, but just like throwing her arms down like, oh, I got to do that again. <laughs> yeah, <it's> rough. <laughs> Rough. Great job. Always fun watching Jalisa compete. And here goes another backstrand. Luke on the course right now. Coming out of the grip. Luke's younger brother to Kai. Uh, St. George, Utah flying through the first two obstacles. No problem. 15 and a quarter. Let's see what he's got on the spinning blocks here. One, two, three, four. Doesn't even bud. I feel like Luke is like is right on the cusp. Hasn't broken into the top ten just yet. He's been very close. Well, you got through those first three obstacles in 17.25 seconds. You can see on the bottom of your screen. His name's Green. That means he's in that top ten. See after his run. He's going to be on the bubble next. Luke overshoots Gradle one more time. Dial this in. On Luke, get up and in. Hold on tight. There's the first one going with the forward facing grip instead. Got to go down to be accurate here. And under shoots. Tough break from Luke. Got about, let's say we're down to our final 10 or so runners. Luke currently in eighth. Up right now, it's going to be the bomb, Cameron Baumgartner, 24 years old. Cam the bomb. And coach, college student, competed back on seasons 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yeah. What he's got, Cam, known for his explosiveness. Yeah. On his way through. Got one, two. Ooh, that first step just shoots out from underneath you real quick. Like, you gotta hit the middle. Gotta hit the middle of the blocks. Here we go again. One, two, three, and ooh, big tumble off to the side there. He's all right, thankfully. Coming down to the third attempt here. Three. Right yep, this has been one that can't it. underestimate. Light. Step in the middle. Come on. Third and final try. One, two, two heavy on the first. Oh, what a save. Okay, good what job, a dude. save here. Calm it down. One, two, and he makes the adjustment to get on out of there. What a save, Strat. Oh, my goodness. He's not quite out of it yet. Use some of that power and accuracy here on the floating. Line bar into sandwich. Go! No sandwich with you, sir. Back to the start. Alright, try number two. Still hasn't broken into the top yet, uh, 10 yet. He has to get past this obstacle. Yeah, was, Going was that our championship trail. last year? Plenty of power there to get the dismount nicely done. Let's go on to the floating monkey bars. Sitting in eighth place. He's got a minute and 15 seconds. He's really going to need to get through this here. It's going to be tight. See if he decides to try to reposition those hands at all. Shift a little. 
closer in. See, the shoulder just doesn't want to rotate all the way around as it's facing those fingers facing in. Just want to, and it's tough to try to change your hand positioning since those bars do spin. It's really Get out of this right here. Really testing the grip here. Come on, Cam. Get on out. And there's the dismount. Nice work. Turns it, burns it. Head on through. Well, he knows now that he's got to move pretty quick. 30 seconds remaining. Not going to take much time here on the overhead battering ram for the drop down. Careful on the way down here towards the end. He's got a lot of side-to-side -side hip swivel. He wants to calm it down here for this accurate landing. His Indeed. hands are actually opposite here. His left hand is back, which is causing his hips to be a little off. Drops. Does get the touch. And right at the time, so great run. What a save from disaster. Cam Baumgartner able to salvage, almost failing at third attempt on the block run. Oh, yeah, and you know we're about to look at look it, Strad. You know we're about to look at this save right here. Gets his hands down, somehow oh. has the core strength. Didn't put his elbow on that middle beam. Steadied himself. Unbelievable save on the block run and he's able to get Ooh. out of it oh my gosh nice. and not only that but he also took some fails on the flying bar fights his way through that really impressive out of cam Baumgartner. Done. he's in the top 10 right now see if it holds up alex real ready to run trains out of his home gym shingle springs california where he's coming out of Not training and competing in, into baseball. He's competing in four NSC competitions. He's 50%, making it into the top 10. He's done very, very well. Let's see if he can work his way through into the top 10 here. Block run, first attempt, no problem right away. All the way through. Into the top cradle, one and done. There's that one. Now we're going to drop on down. Excellent accuracy there from Alex. Just need that big swing dismount. Throws it. And gets the landing. Excellent work. Check the tech here on the floating monkey bars. Where that upper body strength, lock off strength comes into play here. See, floating monkey bars mostly facing forwards, but these sideways ones make it a little more challenging. In a good pace here. Little jog up, takes another point. A minute and a half remaining. Big old leap up there to the spinning log overhead and that body nice and straight Ooh, great landing just gonna go ahead and static between those two and no false at this point you can see on the bottom of the screen puts him into first place right now he is crushing it wow, nice on job. time and he, he ain't done tired man yeah. he looks good right now this is a definitely grueling obstacle here you just spent all that time on the overhead battering ram to Here get comes to the this drop. point. Here comes the drop, Strat. Let's go. Does he have the endurance? Oh my gosh. Come on, dude. Big toss. Oh, <laughs> the drop gets him. Wow, dude. Almost gets it. His first attempt takes, takes his first fall. Incredible pace to that point. Minute 40 through to that point, but he ain't done. I thought we might see our first finisher, Strat. This is really, I think, the crux on the back half of the course. Yeah, those hips get a little crazy. Not quite able to get it dialed in. Not able to get the full switch grip grab. And shaking his head, knows that's a good time to be in for the position that he's at. Gonna go ahead and rest up for the, for the hybrid. I believe that might secure him. I mean, look at this. He's got all the way to the end of this obstacle. It goes up. I thought he oh. had it for a second. 
if he had his hands around it just a little bit more, I think he would have held on to it. Maybe but. a little bit of a bend in the arms to absorb the impact as well, because that drop, man, no joke after all those big throws. Great run. Mr. Alex. Up now is going to be Jacoby Herman. That was awesome. You can see in chat, the run of the day thus far, have to agree. I think that was very smooth. No falls to that point. That is the kind of run you are looking for on a course like this. That's this technical. Here we go with Jacoby Herman on the move. Here's way across that zip line. No problem. Almost 15 years old. Jacoby's known for that tech. Young and as light as he is, he can do some pretty crazy moves out there on the course. Not intimidated whatsoever by these obstacles. Big into extreme sports outside of Ninja, so used to being put in positions of danger. <laughs> Up and looking for the drop. Almost gets it. Go ahead and drop the bar. It tries again. Right into it. Dials went in just a little bit more this time around for the drop down. Nice adjustment on the sides. Yeah, nice work there. Going for the big swing, dismount, and gets the clear. Yeah, speaking of extreme sports, I don't know if he was in his backyard or where he was, but I saw a video posted on Instagram of him like grinding in the snow on like a scooter slash snowboard. Mm. It's pretty sick. Yeah, he's got a cool <laughs> little. Um, Snowboard and scooter looking thing. Yeah. <laughs> nice hold tight in these float monkey bars. Hands on, trying to reposition. Good stuff. And on out of there in a second. Nice job. Got second place for the teens in the WNL finals. Finalist. Ninja Sport Championship last season for a retreat, uh, repeat trip. He's working with some long sleeves here. We're going to see how that's going to yeah, come we'll into see play. You can be a little slippery up there, but not doesn't posing look, an issue. Doesn't look too bad right here. Sticks the wow. landing. I feel like he could have rested there for like 30 seconds. He looked very controlled on that yeah. drop down. Great, uh, great sense of balance. Center of gravity is dropping on down. Hold on tight, minute 30. He's still cruising, hold on tight now. We wanna get through this big drop coming up. Might have the energy still in the tank. Oh my gosh, Strat. Gets to the salmon. Going up and across. And looking for the next move. But that's going to do it. Wow, what a run from Jacoby Herman. Probably the best we've seen out of him all season long. Impressive stuff. That's going to put him in a dominant position. First place. No one else has really come close besides Alex. Made it to that last obstacle. Let's see how we do. Coming up, Maggie Owen, runner number 60. Kobe Herman, first place on the men's side. First athlete to the last obstacle, barely timing out. Right now it's Maggie Owen out of Ultimate Ninjas Naperville. Right, Maggie Owen, here we go on the move. We got her call back. Season 15 as well. Not sure what got tangled up there. Not sure if it was an obstacle malfunction or just where, how she hit the line. I think they're. Yeah, not sure. The mouth, I look like it got hung up a bit. 
set potentially. Yeah, I'm getting word from uh, Ethan Swanson. It sounds like there was something tangled up at the top of the zip line, so uh, she's just gonna get a, be a quick reset. They're gonna give her a couple seconds here, and she will start again momentarily. Our, our camera couldn't see exactly what was going on with that, but obviously it, it took away all of her speed on the zip line. And here we go, get that time around, no problem. Thank you on out the trampoline jump. Comes up short on the hook. Oh, the trampoline, her nemesis, her arch rival. It's the obstacle that she's probably almost always the most worried about. Maggie and trampolines are like Batman and the Joker. <laughs> Just one of those. Unstoppable force meets, <laughs> it, meets an immovable object. <laughs> but she gets through it. Okay, we'll come there off to the side. We're going to have to try again here. She's going to put a lot of pressure on the run now. Two falls to this point. One, two, three, four. Nice work even with those last two steps there. Spinning her off to the side a little bit. Well, Maggie's competed twice this season, and she's been in the top ten both times. Fifth at Ultimate Ninja's Libertyville, ninth at Offsoil Academy. And there's a lot of pressure right now on her run because of the two fails. She's going to have to get through this obstacle if she wants a chance. Not quite able to get there on that first move. Two more tries. Time's ticking away. I mean, we've seen this obstacle be such a ninja killer today. Athletes having a lot of difficulty. Maggie's definitely proficient in the flying bar, but like we've talked about so far today, Strat, like it's a lot more precision than you're used to seeing on a normal flying bar. Yeah, it's not, not your standard straight on dropping cradles. You can just have all the time in the world for especially this one. I actually really like that attempt. I thought she was close on the sandwich uh, holds there. Sandwich cradles is what they're being called. I hope she attacks it in a similar way. It doesn't change her plan too much because I, I actually thought she was close there. Third and final attempt here. This one really got to make it all count. Go. Looking for the drop and not going to be enough. And that is an unfortunate early exit there. Stronger competitors. Well, the pass this one. Let's not take a look. I mean, you can see. On the left side of your screen, it's just not, it goes on top, it doesn't get in. It's, uh, it's part of the difficulty of that obstacle, and for the first time this season, Maggie Owen will not be moving on to the top 10. All right, up now is going to be Paul Woods. Six, uh, 16 years old, Mr. Paul. We're looking for him to accomplish this goal that he set for himself. Hasn't eaten dessert or junk food since 2020, March 12th. I'm not sure that there's a there's an athlete's goal out there, Strat, that I'm not more supportive of and, <laughs> and want to see accomplished. He's this man to, needs some dessert. Oh man, he has to get a he needs to win a qualifier or podium at the NSN finals for him to get that bucket of ice cream. A lot of dessert to catch up on. <laughs> He's motivated by it because he just gets through the first three obstacles, no problem. Up to that first cradle, excellent tech. And gets the drop down, nice work there, able to hold on tight. That dismount, excellent job. All outside of training and competing. Said he's uh, passionate about law and justice. Curious to see what he plans on doing. The uh, justice field potentially. Yeah. Wait for this. Bars here. Problem on the dismount. Great work. Nice work, Paul. Let's go. Up on to the half pipe tech. Swing it on through. Great job. It's 
eighth place right now. Four men after him. So if he wants to guarantee a spot, he needs to get at least six. Drop down. Touch that UFO. That's going to get him another point to pump him up. Should put him all the way up to fourth place. Third place. Ooh, there we nice. go, Paul. There we go. Done. Man, a zebra cake for crying Whoa, out loud. Oh, come on. <laughs> oh, fingertips. Get him a zebra cake. <laughs> up and over. Goes off angle a little bit. Fighting for it. Four arm on top. Here's the big move up. We saw Jacoby Herman get this earlier. Nice wrist lock there. He's trying to lock it in a little bit. Oh, no. 30 seconds remains, but I think that might do it for him time-wise. Place right now, I mean, he's he's burning. You can see it. Oh, that was the last move. And the fact that that drops as well is absolutely diabolical. I don't know who came up with it, but Sean Bryan, Brian Kretsch out here with the dropping sloper hold at the very end of the course. Brutal. Absolutely diabolical. And all going for the battering ram, getting a little more of hang time. Time that remaining, nice try. Gets him into that top 10 spot for sure. Man is on the hunt for some little, some, for some little Debbie cakes. <laughs> and some ice cream one well, let's day. Let's see, as he, as he goes up here, goes for the wrist lock, and as he tries to make the move up, you can Ooh. see he just kind of peels out there. Peeling out like a banana split that he can't eat quite yet. <laughs> Really wants to. Brother man, I'm rooting for you. All right, coming up now is going to be TK Ninja Tricks. Tyler Kurtzel. Trains at a couple different locations. Impact Ninja Gym, Ninja Warehouse, Ninja Playground as well. And out of Harriman, Utah, he is on the move. Rocking the patented orange and black. They have the same kind of Zantes that he's rocking as well. We are past that plane of the landing platform. Yeah, well, we saw Tyler at Austin Ninjas earlier in the season. He qualified. He took fifth place there, and I believe he was coming into the finals round in 10th place, which means he started every course. He was the first runner on every course and just put up an absolutely dominant performance bump himself into fifth place and qualify. Oh, TK Ninja Tricks for a reason. He's got great technique and shows it right there on the flying bar. Sandwich cradles. Clean to that point. Put my cars in. I like the spin tech here. It's going to take away the need to fight the limited range of motion. I saw a lot of athletes struggle with earlier. Plus a taller athlete, so he's got the wingspan. Nice quick work on the floating monkey bars. Doesn't take long for a break here. Goes right into that half pipe attack. Here's yet another point. Next is going to get him in the ninth place. Never ending battering ram followed by the UFO throws. Let's see what he's got left in the tank. A handful of runners to go. He wants to get a little further down the line. Comes the drop. I don't know if we've seen anybody fail this just yet. Dropping. Nice. Sticks it for a second just long enough to eye the transition. Hold tight. Gets a full oh extension on the arms. Anytime you don't get those arms bent, the potential to pop right off. Oh, unable to hold on. Yeah, I'm not sure if he's Tyler, look, he definitely didn't get enough height on his lache there. Might be losing the wristwatch. Nope, don't keep it on. Might be throwing him off a little bit with all the wristbands. Anytime you've got those sloper type holds. Yeah, you got to flex your wrists so hard to hold on to those slopers. Hopefully not getting in his way. A little sut to try to hold on and not go get on the second try. I have time for one more. He's going to have about 14, 13 seconds. Maybe just want to 
feel this for the finals. Another roundabout throw. Yeah, good transition that time. Wants to get to this orange just to get a feel for it. Woo! And that's going to be time, but he got a good experience out of that one. Great stuff from TK. there to make sure everything's in place and still intact. Might be changing that attire for the later runs, but we'll see how it pans out as he got his way into the top ten. Something like that. Up now is going to be Annabella Heinrichs. Annabella trains out of in the core. Coming out of Longmont, Colorado. 18 years old. Is on a &W Season 14. The Family Edition and a &W Junior Season 2. Trends alongside a big crowd out there in the Colorado area. Nate Hansen, Austin Gray, Taylor Green, among others. And she's working her way down. That sliding ring off to the side. That's going to be a clear. That corner landing spot has been the hot spot for many an athlete today. Here we go with the run across the blocks. There it is. Nicely done. She's only competed in one other NSC, and it was down at Jungle Gym two weeks ago. Took 11th place. She was one spot out of the top 10. Well, getting through those first three obstacles quickly is going to put her into sixth place currently. Wow, that's going to guarantee her spot with only Jesse Lebrecht left to compete. Ooh, quick little bump wow. tap there to lock it in. It's to the ring and gets the dismount. Nice job, Annabella. That was pretty much textbook right there, Strat. A little dry off of the shoes. It scurries across the base of the warp wall for the half pipe attack. Nice job. Throwing her into second place. Cruising on through. Climb on up and hold on tight for the hootsie daisy. See how she worked the ring around to get that line kind of more towards the top. Kicks the rope on the way back, and that's all right. Wants to be lined up here for the catch. And one tries all she needs. And going to go ahead and keep those legs locked on for a quick second. Just get in a better position. Indiana Jones backswing. Da, 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 da. Oh, just kidding. Ba, da, da. Nope. Gets the landing, okay. First place right now for the women. Full minute remaining. Full minute, that's wild. No fails to this point, full minute. Climb up a little bit, that's going to be really low. Oh, she's a little low. Great job. I believe it's two left here. We've got the sideways grabs. Early boards. She's got the sideways grabs and then a spider climb, so... He really needs some time for that spider climb. Oof, first. This up move is going to be really challenging. Oh, not quite able to get there. We have 30 seconds. 30 seconds to go. Takes her first fall. Only that's, have about 20 after that reset. but That's incredibly impressive. Yeah, great pace to this point. Only one fall. Just further dominance here in the open. And seconds needs another grab. So close to a finish. Nice. Incredible run out of Annabella Heinrich. Yeah, that was awesome. You can see he gets a nice move up there. Then goes for the drop down. Just doesn't get her hand around quite enough. Nice run. Yeah, but overall, nice job there. Puts her in first place. Well, next up, it's an athlete we are very familiar with, Mr. Max Feinberg. And I am not going to say anything about this run because Debbie Feinberg will yell at me. Oh, she going to... I'm not taking that risk again, Oh, Strat. no, oh, no. What did she yell? I don't know this story. 
we'll, we'll have to save that one for all. We'll save it for line. after the run. Uh, here. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> I'll take it from here. Mr. Feinberg taking it away on his run across. This line dropping on down. No problemo. Max screams out of ninja intensity. Walks across. No problem into box run. Trombone player. Nice work through the block run. That's massive. Season 13 and 14 was the last two seasons he competed on. Made the top 10 on the sport championships last season. Great tech on the line bar. Watch those corners. He tried to adjust and not able to adjust it. Try again. Uh, number two coming up. Good. Just need the big throw here for the dismount. Locks it in. There we go. See Mr. Barajas on the bubble right now. Yeah. One of our First one to clear the flying bar in wave one. Huge, huge run there. Unfortunately, on the bubble right now with Max, Kai, Caden still to go. Nice lock off strength here for Max. Definitely, I think, one of his strengths. Stuff now. We're down to about a minute and a half remaining. On to the half pipe attack. Swing it on. Minute and ten seconds to go. Up and in. He's still not. Got to clear this obstacle if he wants to squeeze into the top ten. He's got to take at least eighth place to block himself in. Is that precision landing? Wants to keep on fighting through this. Let's go, Max. Come on. Ride down with that sideways move. Hold on tight. You can see the fingertips barely holding on there. He steadies himself a little bit before building up that momentum for the up move and not quite able to hold on. Go try number two with only about 10 seconds remaining. And that's going to do it for Mr. Feinberg. The scoreboard gets updated in a little bit. We'll see where it stands. I believe that should bump him into the top 10. Yeah, it definitely bumps him into the top 10. We'll see exactly where he's at. Let's take a look back at this flying bar, though. This is where he actually, this is his first attempt, actually makes it in. He's a little close on his left side there, but... Oh. He goes to make the adjustment and just pulls it out the back. Too much on the back time on the back swing. But I believe still good to go for the top ten. And we're gonna take a quick second. We're gonna go to commercial while one of our batteries is getting swapped out. We'll be right back. Ninja Sport Championship is brought to you by Role Model Software. They craft custom software tailored to fit your business needs, and they're also the makers of Ninja Master and Lightning CAD. Silent Ninja, check out their website for exclusive ninja holds and ninja training equipment. Salibra Family Restaurants, supporters of the Ronald McDonald House helping families and children in need consider donating today. Biagi Bros, a full-service logistics company with 3PL and supply chain solutions with warehouses and truck terminals scattered across the U.S. League of Ninja Warriors, check out their website for exclusive ninja collectibles. Ocean Needs Everyone, the nonprofit organization dedicated to helping save our oceans. And Bucket of Chalk, our official chalk sponsor. Reach into the bucket and grab some chalk today. Well, I'm definitely glad that Max made it into the top 10. Uh, because last time I said I was at Jungle Gym, I said I was really excited to see Max on the V formation obstacle because I thought it was one of his strengths and it was just an absolute commentator's curse. Oh. He ended up not clearing it. Oh. Debbie Feinberg found me after the competition and said, "Hey, would you would you stop talking about Max? You ruined my baby." 
Would you wait till after to talk about that kind of stuff? <laughs> That's our job. That's the risks of our job. The risks. <laughs> Up right now, we got Kai Beckstrom on the move. Kai's been on a tear as of late. Podium, several Ninja Sport Championship events. Winner of the Wolfpack Ninja event. Side by side racing. Known for speed and power. Check the tech on the flying bar. Just rock a huge mohawk when he was on AW Jr. Just trying to grow his hair back out, potentially get that mohawk coming on back. Yeah, Kai Beckstrand has competed in five NSC competitions and has never failed to make it to the top ten. He's always been in the top ten. Now we see Cam Baumgartner on the bubble. Kai is starting to lock in. And float monkey bar dismount. Nice job. Been through half pipe attack. Quick dismount is going to head on over. Overhead battering ram. Trying to move quick here. Might be a full minute ahead of Mr. Dan Baumgartner. And just huge moves across the overhead battering ram. Go ahead and start eyeing that dismount here. Nice drop down, quick pop up, and that's going to throw him hugely up into second place. I mean, you could just see how much power that Kai generates making these moves. Like, even if he's just a little bit off, his swing's not perfect. He just has so much power to make those corrections. It's one of the most impressive things about him, I think, and his speed. Tight, nice transition over. Now he's lining up for the drop. If I hear him screaming at him to exaggerate the move, there it is. Gets the landing. Go to the salmon ladder bar now. And he's just got so much power. He's got about 50 seconds remaining. Get a full clear here. So he's going to drop down. they got to transfer across. And then make their way up Spider. Let's see if we can get our first full clear here. Salmon over. Oh, a little foot slip. And up we go to the top of the of the jumping spider here and looks like we are A-OK. -okay. Gets uh, the clear at around 2.39. And there's a shot of the man of the hour. No fails whatsoever for Mr. Kai Becks. An impressive run. That young no. man nicely done. No fails to that point. Awesome job, Kai. Puts him in first place. Gets the full clear. Let's go. All right, after that impressive run, we got two more runners to go. Up now is going to be Jesse Lebrecht. Coming out of Ultimate Ninja's Neighborville. Gym that she helps run. Program out of. She's a seven-time American Ninja Warrior athlete. Beaten. Seen now for several years. Well, we're going to go to our stats guy here. Begins her run. Stat man's looking up the stats. Jesse swinging on through. On oh, down. Jesse Lebrecht has never. Has always been at least top four in the open round. She's never been worse than four in the open. Well, Mr. DeGangi, hope that commentator's curse doesn't come back right now to hurt your fiance out there. <laughs> oh my gosh, I will be in so much trouble, Strat. One, two. Oh, she was on the last one. All right, she's going to shake that out. Hopefully recover. She knows what it feels like now. To adjust. Push on through. That is the cutoff for a lot of folks. A little off angle again. She's all right. She needs more speed here. She's been a little hesitant on that first block. She needs to generate more speed, and I think she'll be fine. 
come on, Jesse. Don't be like me. Do not fail the block run here, please. He's gotten this in on the show before, but not with a drop down trapeze like this. Let's see if she decides to change the angle. Falls backwards on the dismount and a shocking fall early on from Jesse Lebrick. Commentators curse Mr. DeGangi. Have you Strikes again. Surprise there. No. Not knowing where to step up. Man, that's rough. Being unlucky on special delivery. He has already qualified from a previous competition. But I'm sure that is not how she wanted to go out today. Third and final attempt almost sticks to landing there. Just that corner. Not able to push off that last spinning block. Shocker there from a veteran competitor. And last runner here of all the runners is going to be Caden Lepsack. Moving on now. Nate Hansen on the bubble. Let's see what Mr. Lepsack has in store. Decides to do here. One, two, three, four. Hot steps across those spinning blocks. Ready for that flying bar, Mr. Caden. Last man standing, last ninja standing on AW. Last two seasons. Drop it down. Great accuracy here on the flying bars. Nope. to this point. Caden's got unbelievable grip strength, unbelievable lock-offs. Can't imagine this will be too big of an issue. Just to see the sun shine in from the lights. Hopefully that won't be too much of an issue there. Nice landing, getting ready for that half pipe attack. No problem swinging on through. Minute 20. Half the time remaining with three obstacles to go. Get a repeat. Hopping quickly through. Nice job. Aiden dropping on down. Hopping right back up. Currently locks him into fourth place, so that's unfortunately going to say farewell to Mr. Nate Hansen. Aiden looking for a full clear here. So one full clear by Beckstrin. Time 2.39. Great move. Aiden is on a strong pace at the moment. Taking a little bit of a breather, but not too long a one. Huge move across, going up to the top of that salmon ladder. And now he can transition over into the spider climb, and he is cruising up. Needs to beat it under 239 and gets it at 230 flat. Up to the top, hits the buzzer, and uh, taking away back down the spider hallway instead of to the cool camera spot by the warp wall. That's all right. Excellent job for Mr. Caden Lepsack. Full clear at 2 minutes and 30 seconds. Great job from Caden Lepsack right there. Full clear. Two on the day. I thought it would be three. But we ended up getting two. Let's have a look at our leaderboards here. Brought to you by Silent Ninja. Here. So here's a look. Annabelle Heinrichs in first. Violet Kpo already qualified in second. And Jaylin Bennett in third place. There you have it. Excellent job from the women. Division. Nicely done. And now let's take a look at the men. Let's see who will be moving on to the finals, which will be later today, starting at 4 o'clock Pacific time. Caden Lebsack in first, Kai Beckstrand in second, 
huge congrats to Jacoby, Jacoby Herman in third place. Nate Hansen, Cam Baumgartner just getting bumped out. Yeah, tough, tough run uh, for everybody here today. This was a brutal open course. We'll see what adjustments will be made in the hybrid. We'll see that starting here at 4 p.m. Pacific. So y'all go grab you some lunch, grab you some drinks, come on back with some snacks. We'll be here ready for you in just a bit. Thank you so much for hanging out with us in the chat. I'm Brian Stratus alongside Chris DeGangi. Back in just a bit, folks. And thank you guys so much for hanging out, checking out the stream. We will be back with our top 10 men, top 10 women in the finals later today. That is going to do it. We're going to take a quick word from our sponsors. Appreciate everybody hanging out. And make sure to like, subscribe if you like our channel. Help us do more streams, more competitions. Support us on Patreon. But we will see you guys back for the finals. See you guys later. Ninjas, it's time to take your training to the next level. You need a ninja course in your backyard, and FitBuild offers a range of beginner to elite level courses. All builds are completely customizable and designed to fit your ninja needs. Build slots for 2023 are filling up fast, so contact FitBuild now to secure your spot. Check them out online at fitbuild.co or on Instagram at fitbuildco. Ninja Sport Championship is brought to you by Role Model Software. They craft custom software tailored to fit your business needs, and they're also the makers of Ninja Master and Lightning CAD. Silent Ninja, check out their website for exclusive ninja holds and ninja training equipment. Salibra Family Restaurants, supporters of the Ronald McDonald House, helping families and children in need consider donating today. Biaggi Bros, a full-service logistics company with 3PL and supply chain solutions with warehouses and truck terminals scattered across the U.S. League of Ninja Warriors, check out their website for exclusive ninja collectibles. Ocean Needs Everyone, the nonprofit organization dedicated to helping save our oceans. And Bucket of Chalk, our official chalk sponsor. Reach into the bucket and grab some chalk today. Have you ever experienced extremely sweaty hands? Not knowing where to step on agility? Being unlucky on special delivery? Or being absolute trash at Double Dipper? Then Bucket of Chalk Chalk is the right chalk for you. Side effects may include extremely grippy hands even after washing them. Always know where to step on agility. Adds a bit of extra luck on special deliveries and it tastes like success. Hi, my name is Enzo Ferrari Wilson, and I am the founder of the ocean conservation organization, Ocean Needs Everyone, and we are proud to be a sponsor for Ninja Sport Championship Season 2. I'm here to tell you today about three reasons why you should help the ocean. One, there's so much left to discover in the ocean, 91% of marine species are still undiscovered. Two, if we don't help soon, there's a projection that by 2050, there will be more plastic in the ocean than fish. Three, without the ocean, we wouldn't even be here right now because it gives us 65% of our oxygen. So even if you don't live near an ocean, go out and pick up some trash because it will make a difference. And one final bonus reason why you should save the ocean is because it's nice and refreshing. Here at Role Model Software, we value our partnerships with our clients. Listen as Dr. Eric Freeman talks about our partnership with Cultivate Leadership Institute. CLI was trying to find which software company we want to partner with. We talked with a number of different ones, but the thing that made Role Model stand out was the connection that we had with them. So if you're trying to figure out how do I select the right company for us, you need to make sure that you don't just do that digitally. It's not just an email. It's not just a Zoom call. You need to make sure that you get face to face with these individuals to make sure that your mission and your vision align so that you're creating the product that you want to create. And Role Model has the ability to do that. They are very personal, they care about your product, they care about you personally, and they want to help deliver the product that you need. If you're curious if Role Model can be the right fit to partner with you, reach out to us today. We'd love to talk to you.
Roll One, we believe software development should be learned like any other craft. In our Craftsmanship Academy, cohorts of apprentices participate in hands-on immersion that leads to long-term mentorship. All of this under the supervision of experienced software craftsmen. Most of the academy you spend just in a room working with other people that are also struggling to figure out the same things. And it's, it's actually much faster that way because they figure things out when you don't know them and you help them figure the things out that you figured out. One of the phases of the academy is a shadowing phase where you get to work under a mentor and take all of the practical skills you're learning and apply them directly to a real project. Working in the academy taught me to write business ready software in a way that I could take my experiences and translate them to the real world and I could see the results and I could see people using the software and the utility and the value that it provides. If the Craftsmanship Academy sounds like a fit, I'd encourage you to reach out. One of our long-term partners, SAFA, designs and manufactures fall safety protection systems. Over the years, they keep investing in their software because of the incredible return on their investment, like seeing their quote times going from four hours to just about 30 minutes. That's an 80% time savings. The design software that Role Model created for SAFA automates their design process to produce instant estimates, 3D visualization, parts list breakdowns, and more. Once finalized, their system automatically sends the design to the manufacturing team, reducing production lead times by three to four days. Are you curious to see what a custom software solution could do for your business? Schedule a free consultation today and we'd love to talk to you.